Good afternoon, everyone. It is David Schlott Howard here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Monday, June 9th, 2025. In today's tropical weather outlook and discussion, we'll be looking at the entire Atlantic as there is a chance that tropical development could increase by the end of June into early July in the deep tropics of the Caribbean, the Gulf, and portions of the main development region. To start off the video, here's a look at the latest GOES-19 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at TropicalTidbits.com, link in the description below this video. And as we take a look at the entire Atlantic Basin here, not a lot going on thanks to very strong trade winds, lots of dry, stable Saharan air overhead, and on top of that, we have a lot of deep layer vertical wind shear coming in out of the west thanks to upper level winds that are pretty strong anywhere between 40 to 60 knots and with the flow coming out of the east that equates to about a 60 to 80 knot deep layer vertical wind shear regime meaning that the deep tropics right now are as unfavorable as you can possibly get in the caribbean in the gulf and across much of the Atlantic. But of course, it's a whole different ball game in the Eastern Pacific Basin as we are tracking two systems. Two, but of course, it's a whole different ball game if you're in the Eastern Pacific where there is two named storms taking place right now. We have Hurricane Barbara with winds that are very strong around 75 to 80 miles an hour. And then we got Tropical Storm Consume. That could end up becoming a hurricane very soon. You could even see a little bit of an eye-like future there on the visible satellite imagery indicating that Consume could indeed be a 75 mile an hour an hour hurricane and these two systems are both headed in this general direction but will soon fall apart because there's a lot of cold dry stable air here to the north along to go with some deep layer vertical wind shear and so these two systems will really get torn apart here in the next 60 hours and speaking of of those two storm systems in the eastern pacific this is what it looks like on a vorticity plot this is showing us how much spin there currently is in the atmosphere at five thousand feet above the surface and so we can see two little red eyes indicate that there is two storms um, these are both uh, one is a hurricane one is a tropical storm but i would not be surprised if this one right here is a hurricane indeed in the next update from the national hurricane center so that's what we look for on this map is there any concentration of spin in the atmosphere and that's what we why we like looking at this and uh, evidently there's nothing to be concerned about at all in the atlantic only in the eastern pacific for the time being and you can see why that is there is not a whole lot of deep layer vertical wind shear here in the eastern pacific i wish i was able to bring that up here but it is not on this map unfortunately but you get the general idea vertical wind shear over the eastern pacific is very light right now and so that's why we are seeing um, Hurricane Barbara and Tropical Storm Consume that are both intense tropical cyclones right now. And then, of course, in the Caribbean here, all this red that I've highlighted, that's all deep layer vertical wind shear coming in out of the westerly direction. And that's going to continue, it looks like, here over the next week or so. But what about after that? And that's why we'll be looking at our models here in just a second at forecasting that deep layer vertical wind shear for you all. It is pretty unfavorable also in the Gulf and in the Southwestern Atlantic. Actually, in the Southwestern Atlantic, we're seeing a very light vertical wind shear, but also a lot, a big upper level ridge here. The air is really dry, it's sinking. So this is indeed quite unfavorable despite lighter wind shear in the atmosphere. Now, of course, when we take a look at the latest seven day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida, we can see there are those two named storms. We got Hurricane Barbara, with 75 mile an hour winds, pressures there down in 991 millibars. It is moving generally northwest at about 10 miles an hour. When we briefly look at this, you can see where it's headed towards. Again, it's gonna be a hurricane over the next, say 24 or so hours, but it's gonna quickly weaken so that right now there is no land impacts expected. There is maybe some indirect impacts due to some surf that is gonna animate away from Barbara, but otherwise nothing too extreme at all with Barbara at this given time. When we take a look here at Consume, we can see it is going to remain a hurricane and, oh, it's going to be a hurricane very soon, probably in the next update here. Let me update this. 
We still haven't gotten an update in yet from the National Hurricane Center, probably on their public advisory. Let's see. It is still 65 miles an hour. So as it stands, it is a tropical storm, but it is expected to become a hurricane very soon, or it's already a hurricane, but it's way out here in the Pacific, not impacting anyone. So we're not going to spend any time on that at all. It's just something to look at here that there are two named storms this is the third named storm of the East Pacific hurricane season in nearly three weeks with another area to watch um, very soon that could also become another named storm. So, man, the Eastern Pacific really taking the house or taking the cake with the amount of tropical activity. And then last but not least here in the National Hurricane Center spectral, there is nothing to be concerned about in the Atlantic side of things. But when one basin is active, the other basin is shut down. We're going to wait for the East Pacific to shut down, and then the Atlantic should light up with some activity uh, possibly by the end of June into early July. Now you all may be wondering, when will the tropics wake up in the Atlantic Basin? I know it's pretty early in the hurricane season to see a lot of activity, but sometimes we can get something in June, and so far, looking pretty quiet. So when we look at the GFS model here, the Global Forecasting System, or known as the American model, and here's a look at the three-plot system that I like to use, the color shading, vorticity, how much spin there is in the atmosphere, your wind barbs are showing us which way the wind is blowing from, and then, of course, you got your height contours. Those are the lines. That's what you're seeing here uh, of the atmosphere on where these ridges are and where these troughs are located. So when we put this into motion, you can see there is nothing out there to be worried about over the next three days. You can see all the way through Thursday, June the 12th, all the way through, um, say, Saturday, five days from now, June the 14th, still nothing to be concerned about. Now, of course, the GFS model has finally shut its mouth and it's not showing anything substantial in the Gulf over the last three model runs. So we can praise the Lord on that one. We're not seeing anything big coming into the Gulf or the Caribbean for right now at all. So finally, the GFS is agreeing with the other models. It took a while, but finally on agreement with that. And we can see that over the next 300 hours, there's just nothing big out there. Uh, developing because this ridge is very strong, strong Bermuda high, lots of dry Saharan air coming off of Africa. And that's, again, it's warm, it's stable, it's dry as well. And so it's just not going to allow for favorability here. And so as long as this ridge is very strong, which it has been much stronger than average uh, for May and already for June, it is looking that way again. So as long as this ridge is stronger than average, we get stronger than normal trade winds. There is very little uh, prediction or hope that the hurricane season will actually get active in the next week or so. Now, beyond that, it remains in question if the Atlantic is going to wake up. The GFS model has something out here, maybe another fantasy storm that develops on the 25th here, which is Wednesday. And then a big ridge up here across the north subtropics of the Atlantic with strong trade winds, meaning that the pattern overall here is not really conducive for tropical development. But we'll have to see. There is a bit of a tropical wave here that comes off of Africa. Now, another parameter that I like to use here on the Tropical Tidbits website is the deep layer moisture plot here. And we can see that all these brown colors denote drier air in the atmosphere. In fact, very dry air across much of the tropics here, including portions of the Leeward and Windward Islands. Okay, and then you got your teal colors here. That indicates a lot of moisture in the deep layers of the atmosphere, including for Venezuela, down there across the Eastern Pacific. And this is used quite well. This is a popular parameter because it gives us an idea if there's enough moisture out there in the tropics for something to spin up. And evidently, there is nothing. Look how dry this is. Another Saharan air layer outbreak that looks to show up here. Very well noted on the deep layer moisture plot here in about five days. So everything here is really unfavorable 
at least over the next five to seven days, and that continues to be the case. Now, we do get a little bit of a tropical wave right here that develops, but of course, there is just more Saharan air layer being ingested behind that tropical wave, and so the ending result here is really nothing is going to develop with a lot of drier air here moving into the Leeward and Windward Islands. And that continues to be the case all the way through the end of the GFS model run. There's just no indications to me right now that something is going to develop. Now, we'll see about the Caribbean in the next couple of weeks if something actually verifies with what the GFS is showing here. We'll see if it pops up on the European model. But so far, the GFS model is the only one that shows something that forms up there in the Northwestern Caribbean. This on top of really strong deep layer vertical wind shear, which is a wind change with height and not necessarily the upper level winds themselves. So we can see here with strong trade winds beneath the westerly flow aloft, this is going to contribute to a belt of very strong deep layer vertical wind shear here on the order of 45 to 70 knots. Okay, that is as unfavorable of upper level winds you can get possible in the deep tropics like this, especially in the early to the middle of June. And this is going to continue to be the case all the way through the next seven to eight days where we have deep layer vertical wind shear here that does not look to abate anytime soon all the way through Sunday and Monday, June 21st and the 22nd, which by the way, summer solstice, don't forget that will be at about 10 45 at night Eastern time and 7 45 here in Pacific daylight time. If you're wondering about that on the 20th of June, summer solstice, don't forget. Okay, longest day of the year, and that means the sun is highest in the sky. But also, it could mean that the deep layer vertical wind shear is also going to be strongest too at this given time frame. What we're looking for here is a lot of these blue colors that indicates very light vertical wind shear, and that's what we need to see for anything to become favorable in the tropics. Now that we looked at the next couple of weeks in the tropics based on our GFS operational model, let's take a look now at our sea surface temperatures because we know they are more than warm enough to support intense hurricanes, especially in the Gulf that is now the warmest basin versus the Caribbean right now. You can see right here the loop current running about 30 degrees Celsius at this given time. That's about 83 to 84, even 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you got 85 to 87 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures over the Bay of Youth very, very warm, not as warm as it was a week ago, but still exceptional for this time of the year. And then of course, just the whole entire Gulf is ready to go for intense hurricanes, especially if we get a tropical wave like what we had with Milton. It just was a weather disturbance and it originated from the East Pacific and then got launched up into the Bay of Campeche. That's where it developed. And with very warm sea surface temperatures, a plenty full of moisture, that's why Milton was able to become a Category 5 hurricane in about 24 hours. Unbelievable intensification that Milton had. And it kind of tracked this way and then it kind of launched off that way, right? We won't forget about that hurricane. It is fresh in my memory because it was such a historic hurricane on an intensity scale and a pressure or central pressure scale with pressure that was below nine, 890 millibars. That is just ballistic or was probably that it was an official from the NHC because the planes didn't get there in time but I would assume it's probably a little lower than 897 millibars nonetheless um on the side note of that though golf is very warm when we take a look at our sea surface temperature anomalies just warmer than average this area has really warmed up over the last seven days now, running almost about a degree and three quarters to two degrees warmer than average. So in other words, the Gulf is running ahead where it should be this time of the year anyways, and it's running ahead of where it was last year just by a little bit. So it's just only more heat, more heat energy being stored in the ocean. So once we do get a tropical wave, Will it explosively intensify like we had with Milton? Let's hope not, right? Upper ocean heat content in the Caribbean and the Gulf. This is a measure of how much heat is being stored beneath our oceans deep down, down to like, say, 500 feet or 1,000 feet. 
So the higher the numbers here, the more upper ocean heat content you're going to get. And the more concerning is when we get a tropical wave that ingests all this upper ocean heat content. Oh, man, these hurricanes could really thrive off of that. It's like octane fuel for hurricanes with very high upper ocean heat content here. And then upper ocean heat content anomaly is above average, like we've been mentioning over the last couple of uh, month nearly that the upper ocean heat content here is above normal for this time of the year. Now, the last thing that I wanted to share with you all briefly here is where we are at right now compared to where we are headed during the peak of hurricane season. So I want to make it very clear here that this is not copywritten. I'm not trying to manipulate this map or this graphic at all. Uh, this is annotations driven, uh, drawn by me. So all of this right here, I drew this up to make it easier for you all to understand the calculation behind this. I drew this all up and I drew this up here. So hopefully you all like the graphic here very much. So we are here right now and the arrow points on the graph to where we are at at this given time as of june the 9th 2025 on a monday so on this particular day there have been seven named storms that have formed since 1944 to 2020 and only one hurricane meaning that this part of the hurricane season is technically very very quiet and it's only going to get even more quieter from here on out through the middle of June, because you can see the red uh, graph right here drops down a little bit more. It's really not until we get into July where things get a little bit more heightened, but it's not usually until the last part of August in this early September when the hurricane season goes and gets out of control, out of hand. That's where we get a lot of named storms, a lot of intense hurricanes typically. That's where a lot of our production actually happens. So even so, early August might be dead, like June or July. Do not cancel the hurricane season yet. We could have a very significantly active backloaded season like we had last year. And you could also clearly see here that all of September is typically extremely active. And even into the middle part of October can be extremely active as well during some active hurricane seasons. So again, just because we might not see activity here in the month of June or July, we could certainly see a huge uptick in tropical activity in the month of August, okay? If that's early August, mid-August, or late August, it won't matter very much at all because again, if we're in mid-August, we have a long way to go. But anyways, if you found this tropical weather outlook and discussion very helpful, detailed, and informative, Please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that bell notification icon, hit that like button if you liked today's update, and also leave a comment in the section below this video. Let me know what your thoughts are with these videos that I put a lot of detail into. And also, if you do subscribe to the YouTube channel, you can get latest updates when it comes to live streaming with a landfalling hurricane that I'm planning to do a lot this year on. So don't miss any of the content here, and you have to subscribe if you haven't already. Anyways, that's going to do with today's Tropical Weather Outlook and Discussion. I'll be back with you more tomorrow.